Atomist is such a beautiful and complex algorithm that I wanted to, to leave you with some notes about, about various aspects of it. Okay, so first, as you probably figured out, Adaboost can be used in two ways. First, where the weak classifiers are actually weak. For instance, if the weak classifiers are just the features, or if the weak classifiers are little, those little Viola and Jones boxes. Um, or else, you can, use the, uh, you can use Adaboost where the weak learning algorithm is actually a real honest-to-goodness algorithm, like CART or C4.5, um, where it's producing decision trees. And then the weak classifiers are the decision trees. And so in that case, you're using the weak learning algorithm to search through the set of weak classifiers and pick one that's right for the task. And um, boosted decision trees are, are actually, you know, the best out of the box machine learning method uh, that I know of. I mean, you, you, you put sort of any data set into it, and you can get something out that's, that's pretty darn good. So it's pretty remarkable. Okay, an intercept term. Now, as you may have noticed, Adaboost doesn't automatically necessarily have an intercept term in it. Um, so in e there are really easy ways to, to get an intercept term. And the first way is just to allow the weak learning algorithm to, to produce a weak classifier that's always one. Okay, so if you think about the final combined classifiers being a linear combination of the weak classifiers, as long as one of those weak classifiers is one, then the coefficient for that weak classifier is just the intercept term. And then similarly, if the weak classifiers are just the features themselves, then, um, then you can simply, before you start running out of boost, you can simply append a new feature that's always one. Um, so you just take your data matrix X, and then you just add a feature to it that's always one so that in the linear combination, um, the coefficient for that particular feature is the intercept term. Okay, so yeah, nice little trick. And it's useful for lots of other algorithms too. Now the weak learning assumption. As we know, the weak learning assumption is actually much stronger than it seems. Um, and so I should mention to you that the weak learning assumption does not usually hold. And in particular, it can't hold in any data set that is not separable. Um, but Adaboost works anyway. It actually does a really good job anyway. And the, the way you can think about why this is true is to think about the fact that Adaboost is coordinate descent on the exponential loss. So Adaboost is still trying to minimize the loss by minimizing, you know, it, it's still trying to minimize the misclassification error by minimizing the exponential loss. And so uh, I just want to remind you what the weak learning assumption is, which is that uh, no matter which weighted data set you give Adaboost, its error rate is distinctly below one half. Okay, so if the error rate is this epsilon t, right, that's the error on the weighted data, uh, then that equals one half minus gamma t. So that's the edge over random guessing. If gamma is zero, there's no edge over random guessing. <laughs> so gamma t is that, that edge that it's getting over random guessing. And then the weak learning assumption is that gamma t at every iteration of Adaboost is above uh, gamma WLA, right? Gamma for the weak learning assumption. And that's in gamma WLA is strictly above zero. Okay. So that's, uh, like I said, it's, it's too strong to assume that this is true. Um, and uh, so, but that doesn't really matter. You can still happily use Adaboost because it's coordinate descent on the exponential loss. Okay, <laughs> now this one's a little bit harder to, to walk around, <laughs> which is that, you know, Adaboost doesn't have regularization. So you'd think it would overfit, especially because um, its exponential loss is very unforgiving on points that are misclassified. But it actually tends not to overfit. Uh, and so, um, you know, why, why might that be? And even in cases where the data are separable, it tends not to overfit. And so, you know, why, why is that? And there's a lot of different um, explanations for why Adaboost um, uh, doesn't tend to overfit. Um, so some of them are things like, well, if you stop Adaboost early, then maybe the fact that you stopped it early adds regularization, um, things like that. But the, the leading hypothesis on this is, is, um, is a margin theory. So when we talk about support vector machines, um, you'll find out that support vector machines are designed to maximize the margin, which is the distance between the, um, the uh, decision boundary and the nearest training points. Now, Adaboost was not designed to maximize the margin. So then, so people were asking, like right around the time when boosting was created, uh, support vector machines were also popular. So people were wondering, well, is it because Adaboost is maximizing a margin that it's actually um, performing well? 
And so people defined a margin for adiboost, which is the sort of L1 regularized uh, margin here. Um, so uh, maybe, uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but M lambda i, that's actually y times f of xi uh, for adiboost. So that actually is the margin there. And then with that L1 norm in the denominator, that's actually a normalized margin. And then people had done experiments on um, like Leo Breinman, who, who worked on, you know, random forest and decision trees. He did experiments and, um, you know, I mean, other people also did lots of experiments. And there were many cases in which adiboost really did seem to maximize the margin. Um, and there were some cases where, you know, it wasn't clear, right? Because some, of some experimental setup, <laughs> you never really know what, it, what, it's, what it's doing. And so um, people studied this question for a long time to try to figure out what was going on with Adaboost margins. And what they figured out um, what, what is that Adaboost achieves large margins, but not necessarily maximal margins. Sometimes it does provably achieve a maximal margin, but Sometimes it achieves a suboptimal margin, but those margins are all large. Okay, so I'm gonna put up a picture here where if I have the normalized margin along the horizontal axis, um, and then these two curves, so this is the best possible margin, right? If, if, the, if, the, if the achievable margin is like 0.5, then if you could get, you know, the best possible margin you could get is 0.5, right? That's right along that diagonal. But Adiboost achieves a margin that is at, at least that much for this, this funky function over here. Um, so if the margin is, if the best possible margin is 0.5, then Adiboost mar margin is at least sort of, you know, somewhere around 0.2 there. Okay, and there are some cases, like I said, where Adiboost actually would achieve a margin that's, that's actually optimal. Now, this interesting function is really cool. It actually has a beautiful and interesting form and um, I was excited to sort of find the, all these interesting expressions when working with Adaboost and, and in these interesting questions. Okay, so finally, um, Adaboost has an interpretation as a two-player repeated game. And its game matrix is actually the matrix of margins, M. So the way you can think about this game is that the weak learning algorithm is actually the column player. So the weak learning algorithm is manipulating the, the columns and at each iteration, it chooses a pure strategy, which is one column. And that's the same thing as choosing a single weak classifier. Okay, so this is a, a pure strategy in this game. And then the row player, that's Adaboost. And um, it's choosing a mixed strategy because it's weighting all of the different rows, which is the same as you know weighting each data point by the weight vector dt. Uh, and so as, um, time goes on, uh, the row player ch keeps changing its mixed strategy, and then the column player has to respond to it by choosing a different weak classifier. And this goes on over and over again. And then you can think about um, a, a margin maximizing uh, strategy as one that produces the minimax solution for the game, minimax value for the game. All right, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of understanding of the depth of Adaboost and all of these different aspects of it. Thank you.